Hi, this is uh, the Psychology of Human Relationships. This is part three of nonverbal communication. We're going to talk about hands now. <clears throat> hands are very telling. People don't often monitor what they're doing with their hands, and even though they may be able to subdue facial expressions or other parts of their body from responding to inner emotion, they are likely to display things with their hands. So clenched, clenched hands, particularly if they're doing this and they're really pushing down here, then lighter skinned people, you can see them pushing the blood out or actually uh, not allowing the blood to escape, which turns that red. And you can see the top is turning a little bit lighter in color. They're pushing down so hard, yeah. That's obviously pressure, stress, I'm not going to change my mind. I'm under anxiety. I don't feel safe. So if you were a, if you were a uh, salesperson, let's say you're a car salesman, and you saw a customer doing this while they were looking at a car, and they were wringing their hands, what I call a self-soothe gesture. Other people call it a self-touch gesture. I think self-soothe gesture is a better description. And what you need to do is not ask them, so... How would you like to come in and talk about price? Or what's it going to take to have you drive this car home today? Or you'd look great in that car. Let's talk about price. Don't talk about that. No. What you would do is soothe them. And you soothe them by empathizing with them. So you might say, this is a tough decision. Why don't I let you look at the truck for a while? And I'll come back in a few minutes and we'll talk. That would be the way to handle that. You see? Don't forget what I just said. Soothing is about empathizing, among a very few other things. Um, now, superiority or confidence or even relaxation could be behind the back, gently holding, holding your hand like this. Gently. Eh? Obviously, if we're facing someone, we can't see behind them. But that's what it would mean. Because what you're doing, if you've got your hands behind your back and you're holding them like this, is you're... you're you're exposing your viscera. So from the neck to the genitals, just above the genitals, contains access to the most vital organs. And if those get damaged, we might die. So if you expose that, then you're basically saying, when you see this, uh, gently holding hands behind your back, that you're not feeling in danger. You're not feeling threatened. Okay? But if somebody's holding a fist or they're going like this, that same thing you did in front that shows you that the person's either angry or tense and they're trying to soothe themselves, then you would know what's going on. But behind the, behind the back, you're not going to know any of that. You have to go with face and other things, right? Okay. So I have some photographs on this as well. Let's talk about thumbs for a minute. Some people believe that thumbs are a sign of dominance um, some even think that they're a sign of, of, of sexuality and dominant sexual uh, behavior or interest. So in the case of being dominance, if you hide them, you're hiding dominance or the desire to be dominant. Could be shyness, particularly if you put your whole hand in your pockets. It could be a little nervousness. or If you hear change jingling or you see movement in the pockets, that's probably... Uh, nervousness, but you see, that's why police officers don't want you to put your hands in your pockets. They don't want you to do that in a court of law either, because they don't know that you may have something hidden in your pockets. So they don't want you to do that. Um, but it would be a natural thing if you feel nervous to hide your hands and move them around. You don't want to do that in those circumstances. But it could be a sexual signal. There's something called genital framing, where you actually either put your hands in your pockets and stick your thumbs out toward between your legs or uh, the opposite, put your thumbs in your, in your uh, waistband or pockets and, 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 and frame around your, your genitals, you see. It's calling attention to your, your sexual uh, uh, parts of you. So I have a number of pictures like that that will demonstrate such things. Okay, now let's talk about scratching and moving your finger, okay? Um, if you did this, rub, rub here, rub here, rub here, hand over ear, rubbing, covering the ear and rubbing behind your neck, or just going like this, all of that says, I don't believe what you say, or 
I'm tired of hearing what you have to say. I don't want you to talk anymore. So if you see someone doing this and you want to continue the conversation, if you care, or this or something, just say, I've been talking a lot. What do you think about this? Or tell me about you a little bit. Something like that. Now, that's not a counseling thing. I'm just saying in conversation in general. This, it's called an upward steeple. This generally is placed right here or higher. The higher it is, the more arrogance and narcissism the person is basically showing you on average. This is worse, okay? And this is the worst of all. This is looking down your nose at someone. That's where the phrase comes from. Now, if you're wearing a lot of jewelry and you're doing this, ostentation, feeling superior, narcissistic arrogance, something like that. But, but, if your hands are like this in a steeple and it's lowered steeple in your lap, you're just resting comfortably in your lap, that lowered steeple, that's showing signs of interest in what other people are saying. It says, I'm focused on what you have to say and what your position is. That's what it's saying. Okay? If you um, touch, your, touch your face like this, a little rub right here, will go like this, you're evaluating what's happening and what's being said. That's an, those are evaluation gestures, okay? Okay, um, so what's next? Handshakes. I'm just going to demonstrate this in space, okay? So if someone puts their hand out and they're putting it out perpendicular to the floor, which means they're inviting you to put a hand parallel to theirs, that's called an egalitarian handshake. They do not want to dominate you and do not want you to dominate them in this interaction at least. Okay? If they offer with palm down, now that's palm down a little bit, more, 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 uh, absolutely palm down. They're inviting, the only way for you, the only way you're going to be invited to grab them is from underneath. That gives them the upper hand. That's where that phrase comes from, that I have the upper hand. Okay? Now, if you're savvy, you will know that if you get some of this or some of that, that you grab the wrist as you're shaking their hand with your other hand and pull it and get it in the middle, get it right even like that. Okay? It says, you will not dominate me. <laughs> okay? On the other hand, if somebody gives you, you know, just a, gives you a, a limper, uh, limp hand that they, they're basically saying I don't I don't want to be in charge you can be in charge or if they give you this a, ha a palm up that's also the same that's very passive that's you can be in control you can be in control that's a little less that's a little more you see if they grab your fingers and keep squeezing they don't mind hurting you they may actually like hurting you Everybody knows when you're squeezing fingers, it's painful. And, and you know if you're squeezing someone's fingers. So if, if they pull away, say, oh, sorry, that's different. If they keep squeezing, they're trying to hurt you. <laughs> they don't mind hurting you, let's put it that way. Okay? Another one, another dominant thing is thrusting it in and keeping you from putting your hand halfway between the two of you and shaking real vigorously. That's a dominance handshake. It means... I'm not going to move at all. You're going to stay right where you are. Stay away from me. Another dominant one is to grab their hand and pull it. Pull it towards you. Whoop, whoop. And what that means is you're going to change your position. You're going to do what I want you to do. I'm not changing my mind or my position. And Donald Trump does that all the time. You may know. Okay. Um, one more, and that is when somebody grabs your hand and they cup it underneath, and they put their, their thumbs on top of it. See? That's called a nurturant handshake. Ecclesiastical people sometimes do that. Politicians may do that. It's also showing some confidence that they would take two hands and cup your hands. That's a, a, a way, in, and I'm not sure how to, how to parse that out, but it's a, it's a nurturant handshake, but it's also a dominance handshake. Okay, um, a little bit about arms and legs. And so what we can just basically say is that the less open you are, unless it's cold, 
the less open you are and the more you cross over and tighten your thighs together, your legs, your arms, and the higher up you grab, the more defensive you are, the less vulnerable you want to be, or the way you feel is less vulnerable, I should say. Um, uh, could be, I'm not altering my position at all. I'm not going to change my mind at all. Okay. Good negotiators recognize all of these in their smaller forms uh, and respond to them with ways to f make the conversation flow a bit. Okay. Legs crossed with a, a foot gently moving in a circular motion, just, just gently. That's boredom or impatience. Sitting on the edge of your chair, hold, holding your thighs, on hands on top of thighs, that's you're very interested in what's being said. If the chair has arms and you put your hands on the, on the arms, that may actually be you really would like to get up and leave. Okay, so this is, this is open. If I, if I put my hands out like this, remember, open, open, open. So that's what you have to look for. This is not open. This is not open. This is really not open. Sometimes you'll see one like this. You rarely ever see that. But sometimes you'll see this, and somebody might do this. You know, it, Now, maybe they have a sore shoulder, but if they keep doing that, and if they just rest it there, that's very closed off. Let's talk about walking. Okay. So walking is very demonstrative of what someone's overall set of goals are and what, what they're experiencing at the moment. It's, it, it's, it's more than just in the moment, really. So walking fast, not uber fast, not jet speed, but walking rather fast with arms swinging gently and your shoulders rolling a little bit. That's a person who knows where they're going, they know what they want, and they're going for it. Arms tight to body, generally shyness. In pockets, shyness or secretiveness, hunched over, head down, hands by the sides or in pockets. That could be very much, <coughs> excuse me, that could very much be even more shyness or secretiveness, generally shyness and anxiety, self-image uh, 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 self stuff maybe. Uh, they don't want to be seen, you see. They're trying to reduce their movement and their uh, the ability to see different parts of them, that literally trying to disappear in a landscape, right? If someone is scuffling with their heads down and their, he and then their hands behind their back or in their pockets, they're thinking about something. They're thinking about something. Okay. A confident walk, sometimes called an alpha walk, is head up, shoulders relaxed, okay, M rolling a little bit, a slightly slower than fast walk, eyes straight ahead, a slight bounce in the step. That's actually that's actually uh, an alpha walk. That's somebody with very high self-esteem who doesn't mind being in the world and being seen, but isn't concerned with that very much. It's an alpha walk. Generally true that they don't really care about being seen. So, so, some alpha walkers are intentionally alpha walking, so they can be looked at and seen as an alpha. It's the way they it's the way they uh, 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 show uh, male models to walk in general. Um, and so let's talk about clothing and dress, and then we'll go to the last part. Okay, so. It used to be in the history of humans that the way you dressed determined really immediately who you were and your socioeconomic status and what job you had and all those sorts of things. But now things are a little bit more loosey-goosey in terms of what you can wear depending on where you go. But it still gives us some information. It gives you information on, uh, yes, socioeconomic status, yes, um, uh, where someone is and where they might work, but less than it used to be. So you have to be very creative about interpreting what someone's wearing and not go too far with interpretation, okay? So um, the last thing to talk about on this one, uh, well, let's go to the next one, part four. See you there.